I'm Harold Castle. Welcome to the 314th episode of Questioning Your Reality. Today, our focus is on the theory of quantum superposition, the notion that particles can be in two states at once. That's right. It seems counterintuitive because it mostly is. <laughs> That's why in 1935, Austrian physicist Erwin Schrödinger devised a thought experiment to explain the absurdity of this idea. Now, Professor, do you think a cat can be dead and alive at the same time? Well, no. But actually, yes. <laughs> I ask only because Schrodinger's imaginary experiment, commonly known as Schrodinger's cat, involved placing a cat into a box along with radioactive material. Now, no scientist has ever actually done this to a cat, but we will. And that's what I call breaking the laws of physics. In this program, we'll walk you through the procedure and discuss everything from proper equipment to computation of results. Part 1. Experimental Design. Equipment and Lab Safety. It's necessary to be prepared for all scientific exploration. Safety techniques are incredibly important and easy access to materials make the whole process much smoother. Exposure to radiation can lead to numerous side effects including, but not limited to, vomiting, headaches, irregular heartbeat, emotional problems, growing extra limbs, seeing new colors, hearing things that are not there, and developing superhuman abilities. Therefore, you must take all precautions necessary. A hazmat suit is required for this experiment as we will be dealing with radioactive materials. An apparatus to store and handle these substances will also be needed. Improper treatment of some radioisotopes can cause nuclear fallout or contamination of an area nearly the size of the state of Rhode Island. Read up on a radiation safety manual for more details. For this experiment, you will need a box, a hammer, a Geiger counter, potassium cyanide, a cat, and one atom of a radioactive isotope. If you happen to have a steel box, use it as it keeps all the radioactivity inside. We did not have one, so a regular box in an open field disconnected from civilization for about 50 kilometers should be all right. Here on location, we're using bismuth-212 as our radioactive substance. Although it doesn't matter which radioisotope you use, don't be an idiot and choose uranium-238 because it takes 9 billion years to decay. Part 2. Conducting your experiment. Place your box in a secure location. Turn on your Geiger counter and connect it to the hammer. Place that into the box. It is now ready to detect ionizing radiation. Position your vial of potassium cyanide gas directly under the hammer's trajectory. That way, when the Geiger counter is activated, the hammer will fall and release poisonous gas. The next steps are quick. Swiftly place your singular radioactive atom into the box. Next, put your cat into the box. Close it quickly in case it tries to pull a fast one. Seal it shut. Tightly. It's important not to open the box until instructed to do so. If you do, you may cause a fracture in the space-time continuum. I'm only kidding. <laughs> so, start a timer to keep track when your isotope will decay, depending on its half-life. Congratulations! Congratulations! Your experiment is now underway. Part 3. Thinking inside the box. We understand you're probably very confused. And you should be, because we haven't yet explained what the hell's going on. Don't worry, we'll explain the science behind what's happening in our box, and why we're doing it. All it takes is a small dose of quantum physics. And if you're not the scientific type, just don't pay attention. One of the reasons why this subject is so strange is because small particles don't even obey the same laws of nature that we do. Our world is explained via classical mechanics, like rolling down a hill or throwing things. Quantum objects, like protons, neutrons, electrons, quarks, gluons, muons, leptons, photons, bosons, and neutrinos, are described by quantum mechanics. Take flipping a coin, for example. It can either land as heads or tails. Oh! Harold, yeah. Harold, I, I, I just, are you I think, okay? I oh. just, I think I, I'm just bleeding out of my head a little bit. Yeah. Oh. Okay. In this case, it's heads. But until we looked, it could have either been heads or tails. However, when considering the state of a radioactive isotope, it's frankly impossible to tell if a specific atom will decay or not. So we therefore must say that until we look, it is decayed and not decayed. And that is what we call superposition. The atom is in a superposition of states of being decayed and not decayed. And that's where Schrodinger comes into the equation. Because he literally made an equation called the Schrodinger equation. It can tell us the probability of what's going to happen in a quantum system, or rather, our box. This symbol here is called, <laughs> is called 
called the wave function, which mathematically represents the probability distribution, probability distribution of our atom to be decayed or not decayed. So until we look, we can only describe this particle with uncertainty. It's a strange idea because if an atom can be in two states at once, then why can't I be? Or why can't a cat for that matter? Everything's made of atoms after all. The atom has a wave function, decayed and not decayed. Sorry, I'm allergic to cats. <laughs> because the condition of the cat depends on the condition of the isotope, their wave functions are said to be entangled. If the atom does decay, it will be measured by the Geiger counter, which will cause the hammer to break the glass, release cyanide, and kill the cat. If the atom does not decay, the Geiger counter won't cue the hammer or break the glass, and the cat lives. But because we can't tell if the atom will decay or not, and it has a probability of being decayed and not decayed, the cat must also be dead and alive. Uh, hi, uh, sorry to bother you. Uh, I was just uh, wondering if you see my cat. He, uh, he disappeared a few days ago. Um, he's about yay big. Uh, he's got a little white tummy, uh, a little black and, black and gray, like zebra print all over him. Uh, a little red, like pink, reddish pink nose. Uh -huh. um, he, he can be sassy. Um, his name's, his name's Albert, uh, Albert. Um, but have, have you seen him at all? Uh, no, um, we don't, wait, no, no, we haven't. I'm sorry. Is that a camera? Is that? Yeah, yeah. Is this, yeah it's a, it's, it's, can you zoom in? Can you zoom in on him for all the people at home? Yeah, he's just, this is him. This is this little Albert. Yeah, there we go. All right, okay. But uh, I'll just, I guess I'll just leave you with a flyer. Um, you can call me, my number's on there, day or night. I'm available. Please find my cat. Goodbye. Part 4. Evaluating your results. If we were to open the box, the wave functions of the cat and the particle would collapse, meaning all sense of probability would be eliminated as we would know the outcome with certainty. Once the wave function does collapse, you can go from saying, for example, the cat may be dead to the cat is definitely dead. If your cat is dead, don't worry, it means your experiment is working. But that defeats the purpose of probability. Use Schrodinger's equation to calculate the wave function of x, x being the cat. After a few simple lines of calculus, we have our graphical wave function. Does that mean that the cat is dead? No. Yes. After some thought, Schrodinger later abandoned quantum physics and decided to study biology instead. Unlike normal experiments, ours doesn't have conclusive results. And that's where this story ends. Schrodinger left us with an unopened box filled with mystery and probability. The reality is, it's up to us to interpret the forces that are beyond our control. Like all things, we can never predict with certainty what their outcome will be. But, we can hope for the best. 